This week on the podcast, it's all about dog photography. This is Twitter. Hey, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I am your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today, we're talking about dog photography. And this specific conversation, uh, and you guys know, I've had people on the show before that, that specialize in pet and animal photography, but this one's a little different for several reasons. Uh, we're going to go into Kaylee's work style and why she shoots what she shoots, how she shoots what she shoots, and this amazing new book that she just released, which is how we came into contact with each other. So Kaylee, welcome to the show. How's it going? Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so pumped to be here. And it's going well, relatively well. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, g given the weird, wild, crazy year uh, the, where the wheels fell off the world. But other than that, everything's going good. And I'm really grateful to be here. So thanks for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much for agreeing to do the interview during the down week between Christmas and New Year. So when most people are just vegging out watching movies and putting on pounds, we're working and having fun and talking photography. So thank you for taking the time out. All good. I'm so grateful. Yeah. Yeah. So let's dive into this. So Kaylee Greer, you you are a photographer. You specialize in animal photography, pet photography, dog photography specifically. So let's let's rewind a little bit and go into how you got started in this world, this sort of upside down world of shooting furry people instead of models and, you know, all that cool stuff. Yeah, it's one of those things where, like, when you show up at a party, you know how well what, when parties were a thing, um, yeah. you know, and, and you sort of, like, talk to other people and you get to know people and you meet them and they, they sort of, like, ask you, you know, everybody's sort of sizing each other up, right? They're like, so what do you do? What do you do? And then that's when I enter and say, oh, I, I photograph dogs <laughs> for, for a living. And, <laughs> and, and people often kind of say, like, oh, oh, that's that's cute. Like, do you do you do okay with that? You know, or, or whatever. They find it quite interesting. In fact, I think they probably think like, oh, so you're unemployed. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> but actually, in between job. <laughs> exactly right. Um, but actually, it's been, oh, man, it's been an incredible wild ride. I've been photographing dogs professionally for a decade now. So I started my business 10 years ago. Um, I'm based in the Boston area, and my business is called Dog Breath Photography. Um, and, and basically since the moment that I began 10 years ago, I started by photographing dogs at the shelter, um, simply just volunteering my time and trying to make whatever small difference I could make in the lives of these dogs who had no voice to speak for themselves. Um, you know, dogs that had these amazing stories to tell that had, had no way to tell them, um, basically that's where I figured out that a photograph had the power to, to save a life to change a life. Um, and so that's kind of where I started to learn. Yeah. I did go to college for visual arts. And so I had photography as sort of part of my curriculum. And so I, I kind of, um, you know, knew a little bit about it, but I wasn't by any means professional or um, really even good, <laughs> yeah. which is okay. Yeah. That kind of came, you know, over the years as I developed and progressed. But um, that's just kind of where it all started. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. Sorry. So, no, no, no. This is this is great. It's it's funny. I wanted to interject in there, uh, or not funny. It's actually coincidental that we're having this conversation cause, because when I started in the in photography, uh, I'm a combat photojournalist by training and for the for the Air Force. And when I was going through my training, one of the assignments that they gave us this is in Denver, Colorado, was to pick a story. We had all come in, all the photographers had come in to train, right? And they gave us these assignments. And my assignment over three days was to pick a story, shoot it, process, print it, mount it, and present it to the, to the class. This is back when we processed and printed and, you know, made stuff other than digital, you know? So, so we did this thing. And one of the, my assignment was to photograph an animal shelter. Um, and I remember it's so funny that you say it could save a life because this we were talking the, about the assignment and I was trying to figure out what I should do for the assignment. And I wanted to do something that was 
kind of what you talked about, you know, saving lives and sort of helping people, helping somebody. It turned out to be dogs. But the, the long story short, my story was on, I think I titled it Organized Euthanasia because it was about the animal shelter and showing, you know, I showed the ingest all the way through the end, you know, for the dogs wow. that didn't get or or pets that didn't get adopted and what that looked like. And I wrote up a story about you know, the, the situation in Denver at the time of the how many animals there were versus people that were willing to take them in and what happens to the leftovers. Right. So, wow. yeah, oh it was crazy. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that is incredibly powerful. I had no idea that you had that in your background. That is that yeah. is so incredible and so powerful and i mean what a big beautiful heart you have to have to to be able to witness that from from front to back like you said because i yeah. i will admit that the part that i experience typically at the shelters is um you know kind of the the part where the, there's so much hope there's still so much hope right because the dogs are um, they're coming in and it's heartbreaking and sad when you see their you know previous owners kind of walking out the doors and leaving them and that that part is hard but I always have lots of hope for their futures and kind of what can happen for them next so and I will say that I've never not that I haven't by choice stuck around for the those final bits that that sort of can happen to them but just mm -hmm. that the shelter that I volunteer at that system is very um you know kind of private about that that part of things and that that process at the end is very like sort of hidden from the public you know and from the volunteers too because our hearts are so wrapped up in this work and we love these dogs so much that it is so gut wrenching and emotional to, to find out or to hear, you know, what happened to, to Fido and, you know, cell B or whatever, you know, and um, yeah. so, so, so to actually, I saw a photographer who did a series somewhat like you just mentioned, who was with the dogs. They, they took their final portraits before mm. the dogs sort of went into the euthanasia room and they were so powerful. And I thought, my gosh, that is like, what a heart and a spirit this person has to be able to, for the sake of art and for the sake of spreading an incredibly powerful message to the public about the stuff that happens behind closed doors that we prefer not to think about, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You have to be so strong. I am so impressed that you did that. I really yeah. am. Yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't, yeah, it was, it was tough. And I think that was the whole purpose of the assignment was to get past that and still be a photographer that is, or a photojournalist that is a fly on the wall that's able to document it, but still ingest the emotion into the story. And then, you know, there was a the whole written side of it that, you know, you have photos, you know, photos and a, a well-written story. It's very powerful together, you know, when, yeah. especially if one person does all of it, you know, because you can have a photographer and a writer and the writer is kind of looking at the photos. But if you were the person that took the photos and were in that environment and then are now describing it, it's different. You know, it's a different kind of Kind of right. feel. No, absolutely. Yeah, because the writer may not have the same idea about the story or the same passion yep. that the photographer had or the you know, the same end goal. So that's that's pretty cool. I would love to see that. You're gonna have to send that to me when whenever yeah, you have to find it. I would yeah. love to see that. How long sure. ago was that? Oh, uh, should I date myself right now at the oh, end? Of <laughs> yeah, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> that was so that had to be uh nineteen ninety. Is when wow. that was. <laughs> so, yes. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. That's so yeah. cool. That I am 53. Be... I'm 53, in case you're wondering. Get yeah, out so. of town. I wouldn't uh -huh. believe it. Yeah. And Earth year. Or human years, not even dog years. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. to kind of to sort of just finish out the general kind of crazy, weird journey I've been on, um, since I started photographing dogs at the shelter 10 years ago, everything kind of spiraled out of control um, in the best way possible. I feel like I've been on like a roller coaster ride for for a long time. Um, but basically I started my business dog breath photography um, after that only because I was getting so many inquiries from people who would see my work, um, whether they saw me shooting physically at the shelter, maybe there were other volunteers or it was, um, you know, people on social media seeing me posting about these dogs and telling their stories. Um, going back to what you said about the story being such a powerful part of it, like the written text mm -hmm. and what I want to say about these dogs to go along yep. with this photo that I hope will stop you in the midst of this very busy world that we live in. You know, we have so much stimuli coming at us at 100,000 miles an hour at any moment of every day. And so how can I make people stop and think 
and and how can I make people consider that this dog's life, you know, matters and that this dog exists and is waiting for someone to come change his fate, you know, forever. So um, people kind of started to see that and uh, and that sort of spiraled into, well, hey, I would love to, to have you photograph my dogs, you know, as um, maybe uh, per, for personal artwork, et cetera. So that sort of turned into this boutique photography business. Um, and then from there, about a couple years into that, uh, I started to get like all these commercial inquiries that started sort of rolling in to my inbox kind of organically. I, I never really seeked them out. But within, you know, three or four years, I was shooting, you know, campaigns to start off for like smaller brands that were maybe um, uh, regional like dog type brands. And we would do little ad campaigns. Uh, and then that kind of spiraled from there. And then suddenly before I knew it, I was shooting like a, a big ad campaign for pedigree. Um, you know, so it was suddenly it was weeks on location with big art directors and yeah. um, sets and production. And, and then after that, um, I started to teach workshops. So I, I've been, I've been so, so, so privileged to be able to go all over the world. I've, I've photographed dogs in like about 14 or 15 countries. Now I've taught workshops in France and in Spain, Australia, New Zealand, Costa Rica. Um, I had unfortunately lots of lots of workshops and travel and fun stuff booked this year, but like the rest of the world, that all kind of got, you know, we got grounded a little <laughs> so, bit. Yeah, a yeah, little. <laughs> so it's all good, and it's crazy too because they were all rescheduled for 2021. But actually, it's looking like we may not be able to do any international travel in 2021 either. So it's like, yeah. oh, man, it's so gut wrenching. But it's OK. I tried to, you know, come to terms with that pretty quickly uh, early on in this whole COVID process and say, you know, let me refocus inward and figure out kind of what's next for me. But um, after, you know, all the workshops and all that, uh, then I got the craziest thing of all time happened. I mean, I started to see my work in like magazines and in, like I said, ad campaigns and on greeting cards. And it was all so surreal the whole time. Meanwhile, the everything has always been fueled by that love that I have for these rescue dogs. So all along, I've been doing rescue work and been very passionate about that. So everywhere I travel, I find a shelter that needs um, help, that needs light. And I'm, I donate my photography and I'll help them design oh, websites so cool. and whatever they need. So um, somebody at a big um, reality television production company saw my work. And I want to say it was on Reddit. I think it was on Reddit. Do you use Reddit at all? Uh, I do. I'm not a, I'm not a big Reddit person, but I, I, I skim there every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, they call it like the front page of the internet, right? So like everything mm -hmm. that kind of goes viral sort of seems to like be born there and start from there. And then like news media outlets will grab it from, from Reddit or like whatever ends up on the front page of Reddit. And because the algorithms are so uh, sort of organic over there, like it's, you're not followed by anybody. Even if you're a celebrity, it's all anonymous. Nobody would know that you're like this celebrity posting up this photo. Therefore, it gets a million likes or something, you know, yeah. it has to be good content that just organically gets upvoted. So I shared some of my work on there with absolutely no expectations whatsoever. But I just saw other photographers like being like, hey, this is what I shoot and this is what I shoot. So I thought, you know, what? I'll share what I shoot, which is dogs. Um, and that went kind of w kind of wacky. And so, um, so yeah, this producer from this television um, company kind of saw it there. I think it was there. And he came to me and said, listen, like, I think what you do is so interesting. And um, I'm a producer for, you know, this um, production company. And would you be interested in sharing your story and, and all your rescue work that you do and going, be letting us go behind the scenes with you? And could we share it on TV? Would you be interested, you know? And it was wild. It was so crazy wow. wild. And I couldn't. I was Would you be like, interested? I, yeah, I couldn't imagine. I just couldn't imagine. And it was crazy, too, because when he called me, he wanted to Skype just to, like, see me. And ch I think just see kind of how I was on, like, a camera, you know, like a, just uh -huh. a small screen or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And at the time, I was in Costa Rica and I was photographing at a shelter there. But I was sitting down to take the call, like, in this really cool spot where the ocean was behind me. And there was, like, all these palm trees around me. And, like, seriously, right at the moment that he, like, um, that we picked up the call like two monkeys came down the trees <laughs> like right on the other side of me and i was like wow these monkeys are selling me right now so hard because it's making That's my so life cool. look interesting it was so cool i was he was like are those monkeys is that for real and i was like i'm volunteering at a shelter in costa rica and they're everywhere the monkeys are everywhere and they're so incredible i love them um but anyway so long super super long story short because i'm the queen of long stories oh i love um, this this is good they, they, it's it's just weird it's wild and weird and i truly truly believe that anything is possible anything um so they made what they call a sizzle reel which is like how um basically how they sell a television show to a network 
And this is the company that made, um, I don't know if you've ever, if you watch HGTV at all, but they mm -hmm. made um, Fixer Upper with Chip and Joanna Gaines, which is like okay. a really yeah. huge, huge hit show for HGTV. And then yep. they made Cake Boss and some of these other recognizable like titles. So anyway, um, National Geographic ended up buying the show, which was so, so crazy. So wow. Nat, Geo, Nat Geo Wild, which is, I can't even tell you, like I could... Oh, man, I, I don't know. I feel like my head could pop off of my body from all the joy. I, I really can't believe it's real. Um, but so Nat Geo Wild bought like a three part miniseries um, mm -hmm. kind of about about me and my life and following me around photographing what? dogs all over the world. Isn't that wild? So you can actually watch it. That's <laughs> uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, so that's up now. That's available yeah. on Nat Geo now. So What's it's on um, iTunes now and it's on. I want to say if you have Hulu plus like the mm -hmm. fancy version of hulu you yeah. can get it on there too um it used to be on their website so basically we filmed them we did the whole thing and they uh they were on air on television on that geo in like 2018 and 2019 okay. and then i think sometimes they rerun them now because i do get sometimes like messages from people going oh i just saw your show and i was watching tv and i saw it and i love your story or whatever and i'm thinking oh yeah. wow i guess they still sometimes rerun them um, oh that's so cool yeah, what's the, what's the title fancy. what's the it's title of the show it's called paparazzi, P-U-P-P-A-R-A-Z-Z-I, -Z -Z paparazzi. <laughs> paparazzi. Okay, yeah. R-A-Z-Z-I. Nice. Yeah. So okay. Was, as a photographer, you know, as you know, I mean, there's really no more. There's nothing better than National Geographic. It's like the holy grail, right? Yeah. For photographers. Yeah. So it was Absolutely. Absolutely incredible. Like, what an out-of-body experience. It was so wild um, to film that show, to, to be on location with, you know, with the crew from Nat Geo and from the production company. And then getting to go to, you know, their, their fancy, you know, parties and get-togethers and the premiere of the show was really cool. And it was, it was a great thing. It was nice. So it's a really cool relationship to have. Actually, and at about the same time, I, and this is so weird because it was completely unrelated, but about the same time, I got the cover of... Nat Geo Wild magazine. So what? Yeah. So was, and I said to them, I said, "Do you know that I have a show in production with you?" When they reached out to me, because they said, "We love your work, and we're doing an issue on dogs, and we we think that we want to run your." So basically, when they pick out images for potential covers, at least for the Nat Geo Wild magazine, but I imagine it's with probably all their publications. They do like a test run to different. Um, so they pick like maybe f three or four or five. And they do a test run to uh, certain like focus groups to pick out yeah. the cover, which one's uh -huh. the most impactful, right? So yeah. they asked me, you know, we just want to try it in a focus group and we can't, you know, guarantee anything. But so I, I thought, okay, well, that's cool. I'm sure that, you know, you, you think you have this limiting belief, right? As an artist, you're, oh, yeah, that's fine. That's not going to happen. Sure, you can try yeah. it. Yeah, um, you, want like, brace, you want to brace for disappointment, it. right? You yeah, wanna... <laughs> I don't know. It's just one of those things, right? You, like, protect your heart. So you're like, yeah, of okay, course. Um, yeah, try it. Feel feel free. And that's cool either way that they just, that they considered me. But she came back to me a couple weeks later and said, yeah, they, they absolutely loved your cover. So your cover is the one we, we choose. And um, and I said, this is so wild. Did you know I have a show in production with your, like, television, like, division? But they had no idea because I'm pretty sure they're, like, very disconnected from each other the very very separate entities um but it was a crazy year that was 2018 um for those things so that's kind of wild it, it was that's all... crazy that is crazy yeah. you know i'm thinking i'm thinking there might be there might be something to this dog thing i think it might catch on i don't yeah. know <laughs> it, might, it might be a thing <laughs> i just think that's the thing about uh, i think there's a lot of reasons that I think this all worked out so well for me, but I do think like niching down and being sort of this, uh, uh, not a jack of all trades, master of none, but sort of like this, you know, I, I do this one thing, I do only one thing and I do it really well. Is That's what, that is what value. I want to talk about. I, we have to talk about that uh, because the, it's so interesting that you say that because you have people that are just starting in photography and you know, they're excited and learning about the gear and light and all that stuff um, and trying to establish their style. And there's one school of thought that says in order to establish who you are as a photographer slash artist, you have to shoot many genres, right? You have mm -hmm. to figure out, it's like dating. You got to figure mm -hmm. out what you like in order to figure out which one you want to be with. Right. So, mm -hmm. and then there's another school of thought of, find something and go 150% on it and figure out if 
if you are good at it. If not, then switch gears to the next thing and go 150%. What do you think? What, what's the best way? Because it sounds like you found your thing and just drilled down on in, into it. And now you're becoming known for that thing. How, what's, what's the best path? Yeah, that's uh, that's an incredible question. And I have heard photographers really, really strongly and successful photographers really strongly argue um, the former case, which is like be good at everything. You don't want to be in a situation where you can't you kind of can't handle it and you don't know how to deal with, you know, shooting a person with a baby in a ballroom with it. You know, you want to know how to do everything, which I do believe has some credence. You want to be a master. If you're going to shoot ad campaigns, you need to be prepared for anything. You need to be at the top of your game. But as far as just strictly from a marketing standpoint, doing one thing and one thing only and doing it incredibly well um, is I, don't, I mean, I think. I think that's the answer. For me, if you're going to ask me, Kaylee Greer, that question, I would say when I go to a photographer's website, some people might not like me for saying this, and I'm, I feel so bad to say it, but I don't ever want to make anyone feel bad. But it's, um, I, I'll tell you the truth, and the truth is I, if I go to someone's website and I see like a landing page that has like corporate events, headshots, like maternity, newborn, um, pets, uh, uh, architecture or whatever, right? Let's just say all those things. I immediately feel like, okay, like these are going to be fine. You know what I mean? That's my, my, um, my initial thought. And sometimes I'm proven wrong. Sometimes somebody is incredible at all those things, but that is absolutely the exception to the rule. Yeah. Typically yeah. it's, you know, um, they dabble in lots of things and never chose like a focus. Um, and I just, I feel if again, if you're asking me how, how it's sort of gone for me with dog photography and, um, not only um, like how it's changed me as a person and lit up my life with love and every day is magic and all I ever want to do is wake up because the next day is so much better than the last day. Um, but even from a business standpoint, financially, um, the success of the business in general, uh, I think just focusing on one thing has been absolutely my bread and butter the key i love that you know that's what i yeah 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 and then you find the thing that you love and then you just do it right so that that that's awesome it kind of reminds me of like the in the medical field you got who would you want handling your critical life-saving procedure um no disrespect to any of these fields but if it's a critical life-saving procedure do you want a a, a general practitioner that kind of knows how to do that thing too or do you want somebody who spent their entire career perfecting how to do that thing <laughs> so yeah yeah I th- exactly you know. i mean that's such a great example and of course like i said it's extreme because we know we're not like doing brain surgery as photographers but right. if somebody's trusting you with you know, um, a hundred thousand dollar, three hundred thousand dollar ad campaign that they're on the line for for their company. Like they are absolutely going to weigh you against other people and say, you know, who is the who is sort of the um, the expert in the field, you know. Um, and I think the other thing, too, that to really like quickly touch upon is generally just truly like authentic passion for something so for me for example i feel that i can shoot portraits i feel that i can shoot landscapes um in fact you know when i go on vacation to a beautiful place or if i'm traveling for a shelter work overseas somewhere beautiful i will take landscape shots i want to make something special for my home or whatever even just to share on social media you know and i can do that stuff but i can tell you in my heart like my soul is not on fire when I take those things. It's just, I'm doing it. It's nice. I relatively enjoy it, but it's nothing like the way I feel when I photograph a dog. It's nothing like the way that like the, the, the sky lights up, the world lights up for me when I'm photographing dogs. And I don't think that you can fake that, you know? So I think it shows in my work. I think if I photograph sometimes like my, for example, my clients will ask, you know, hey, I know this photo shoot is about, you know, Fido and it's going to be about him. But I would like to jump in a few photos for my family Christmas card. Can we do that? And I will because I, I really do love and appreciate my clients. I, of course, I'm happy to. I'm capable of it. I'm happy to do that. However, when you see the photos, you know, at the end of the session, what I deliver in the gallery, I feel like you can see like in those family shots, like I am doing a job. I am taking yeah. photos for a job because you asked me to because it's not as an artist what I would choose to do, you know. Um, so I do feel like it's very evident even in people's work when they're trying to sort of like do all these different things 
um, to maybe make their business more well-rounded and say, well, I can shoot real estate photos, but I can also shoot family portraits. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did so, that at the beginning. I tried everything and I just nothing clicked until I pointed a camera at the one thing that has moved me and changed me ever since I was born onto this planet, which is dogs. And that's that's amazing. That's the where you got to be. Right. It's like, you know, would you we have you, Target, right? The department store. So you could go into Target and buy jewelry from the Target jewelry counter or you can go to like Tiffany's and buy. You know, what's the bank? See that? Merry Christmas. You could go oh, to. Yeah. <laughs> Who's getting that? Who's getting that Tiffany's? I got that. I love it. I got Tiffany's. Oh my God. That's brilliant. I love it. My first Tiffany's ever. I give it all the time. This is the first time I got it. What is it? Can I know what it is? Yeah, it's just, it's a ring. It's a non-wedding ring, but it is a ring. Yeah. That's so So, exciting. I'll send you a picture. I'll email you a picture. Oh my gosh, please do. Yes. That's so exciting. Sparky. I love it. I will. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, but yeah, so would you would you rather go to the Target jewelry counter or would you go to Target, right? Who only does jewelry? You know, the entire business is all about jewelry, or one of their departments happens to be jewelry. You know, so right. yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta go in that direction. Well, that, you know, one of the things I'm gonna switch gears into is your style, which is unique, and it's you know, I, I look at it and it just. It, it is very much your personality as I've come to know you over this interview. It is, it is very, it's just, I feel good when I look at your images, right? <laughs> so Thank it's, you. Oh, I don't feel you. like, oh, this artist is troubled and trying to do this and deal, you know, it is, you can feel the happiness in the processing, the lens choice, the composition, you know, the expression that you capture in the dog, the backgrounds that are back there. You can see it all come together in this sort of hyper realistic world of that particular dog who's in bliss. So I dig it. It's really, really cool. Thank you. That really means a lot to me. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and it's um I, I I so appreciate it's such a huge compliment. I so appreciate when people feel they can see kind of me, like my spirit and and, yeah. and sort of my colorfulness and my quirkiness for lack of a better term in the photos themselves because it is you know, such a personal thing, your style, right? Like as yeah. a photographer or as an artist in general, like if you're a painter, how you paint, or if you're um, a musician, like the, the compositions you write, it's so, so deeply personal. And it comes from like this little tiny place that's like behind my rib cage, you know, and it's always <laughs> been there ever since I was like this five-year-old girl, you know, running wildly across the street to, to, to pet any passing dog I would see. Um, it's, it's interesting because I noticed when I started to sort of find my style, like like in my photography journey that I was like, oh, this is exactly how I've always seen dogs ever since I was a child, like kings and queens of their dominion, like comic book superheroes, you know, um, <laughs> kind of hyper real, like surreal sort of um, bright colors, joy, j- just just unrelenting joy is what I feel when I look at them. I share my mm-hmm. life with, you know, my own two dogs. And I think a lot of people who are dog people and who have dogs in their lives, they totally understand that like indescribable feeling of just sheer happiness that these like animals give to you in this selfless love. And, and so, you know, w- without it using any more adjectives, basically I could say, <laughs> you know, that <laughs> it is a direct representation of how I feel about dogs. And so, when I first started photographing dogs at the shelter, like I said, right at the beginning, I mean, I wasn't necessarily any good. I just had this like mission and this purpose and learning photography and getting better at it was all um, really just in order to be able to further uh, the ability to tell these dog stories. It was never like, OK, I want to get um you know, I want to get better and I want to hone this style so that I can market myself and so that I can become a successful businesswoman and so that I can, you know, pay my bills and buy a house with the money from photography and so I can have the cover of National Geographic. It was never any of that. It was always, let me just kind of hone and define who I am as an artist so that I can do better for these dogs. Um, And so that's kind of when I decided to step outside, massively outside of my comfort zone and stop taking photos that looked kind of like all the other photos I'd ever seen of dogs, mm-hmm, you know, and mm-hmm. say, I want to, I want to bring my own sort of unique heart to this. And how do I do that? And so that's when I started to, well, my fiance is a portrait photographer. 
Um, and I was on a shoot with him once and I saw him, he, he was photographing, he does people. We always say he does the two legs. I do the four legs. <laughs> and, uh, Perfect. <laughs> uh, and he was photographing this beautiful, um, musician for the cover of her album. And we had her out like in a forest and he had all this lighting, like this beautiful, you know, beauty dishes and octoboxes. And, and I see him kind of manipulating the light and the natural atmosphere. It wasn't in a studio. You know, we still had to deal with the natural light and then kind of balance that with all the strobes and the gels. And I, I watched him. I stood back holding the, you know, just kind of holding the stand up so the lights didn't blow over because that was my job. <laughs> just like an <laughs> assistant, you know, yep. and I, it hit me in that moment. I said to myself, like, why can't I treat dogs like fashion models? Why can't I treat dogs like like superstars? Um, and and so that's when I decided I wanted to try to take things to the next level um, and start introducing additional lighting and introducing lenses that you would have never traditionally use on a dog, um, stuff like that. So, I mean, really, that's the really long answer for you about sort of how my style came to be. Yeah, no, I love that. That is that is just, you know, it, normally I would have cut you off in that, but it is riveting, you know, <laughs> you just I've been in a journey and, and seeing how you think about, you know, this this genre. So it's really good. So, OK, so the what I wanted to end the interview on is just, a, a you know, part of the way that we or I guess the main way that you and I came in contact with each other was through your book that yeah. you've written and published through Rocky Nook. So tell me about the book and, and oh my God. that I, piece I, of the whole pie. I genuinely can't believe, first of all, that I did that. I can't believe I did that. I have like massive um, inability to focus on things. It's funny. I just talked about focusing in photography on a subject, but when it comes to actually um, in my daily life, like focusing on a task. Oh man, I'm like blinking lights, shiny pennies. You know, I get so <laughs> excited about a million things at once and I can't stick on one task. Um, so writing a book was like, oh boy, when Rocky Nook and I discuss, like when we had this discussion about, what we, you know, we'd love to maybe work together and, you know, have you do a book for us. I thought, man, I have so much to share. I feel like I have so many sparkly little nuggets about professional dog photography and my 10 years in the field and talking about all the different things I've seen and experienced and all my, my secret tips and tricks on how to get a dog to look at you and how to deal with, you know, this situation or, or that situation or an, an overbearing owner or a dog that doesn't know how to sit or whatever. I could go on and on. However, I had a, I just knew that, that it was going to be nearly impossible for me to like organize all that information in my head and like yep. put it into a book in a cohesive, you know, sort of organized outlined format that would be nice and enjoyable to read rather than just being this total, for lack of a better term, I don't know if I should swear, but um let's say uh shoot show <laughs> but you know what i mean because that's what you know that's kind of what comes out of my head right away it's like this big like scribble of like junk and colors and sparkly things and yeah. then i have to organize it all so i mean it was you know what i, I do have to thank covid for is the i had i was forced into having to focus mm -hmm. and i had no distractions right because it was like well the government is telling me I cannot, you know, leave my house. I cannot travel. I cannot. So let me just chill out for a minute because I'm always a, I'm 800 miles an hour. Every day, every moment I have to go. I have this to do. I want to volunteer here. I got, you know, look at the light. Oh, the light is so pretty. Look at the light. Let's go outside. We have to take a picture. You know, it's never ending. So it COVID really did force me to stop and say, okay, let me like reevaluate priorities. And I think it did that for a lot of people. Um, but when it came to writing the book, it was a massive savior because I really had no choice but to stay home and say, OK, well, today I have nothing else at all going on except for, you know, I'm going to write 10 pages or whatever. I'd made a goal every day. And so I um, I did. I, I did it. I put everything into an outline and I organized all the crazy stuff in my brain and I made a book. And it is I can't believe it exists. It just came out only a couple it's weeks beautiful. ago. It's beautiful. It is oh, beautiful. It is a thank beautiful you. book. Congratulations on it. Thank well you so done. Much. Well, very well done. So tell for the folks that, that are listening that want to know, say like, what's what's this book? Tell me about it. Who's yeah. the book for? What's the what's the purpose of the book and what can people get out of it? So the book is called Dogtography, a knock your socks off guide to capturing the best dog photos on Earth. Uh, I wish I had. I should have had it with me. I'm so unprepared. It's downstairs. I would hold it. Mine up. got ah! stolen. Mine got stolen. I had a copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, oh, I love that. That's you, I did told you say you. it was your niece. Your niece. My took niece. It? My niece took it. Yeah, yeah. She's got. I it. love it. <laughs> so, dogtography is a guide to photographing dogs, but it is not necessarily just for professional photographers it could be for anyone so in this day and age there's like a lot of people who have like instagrams and social media accounts for their dogs love it or hate it it's a thing it exists so i think a lot of people um in the world in general just want to take better photos of their own dogs so mm -hmm. this is great for them but it also is very um heavy on the uh specifics of how to photograph dogs professionally as well in, in terms of it addresses um, you know, SLRs and different models of SLRs and different lenses. And so um, it's really good for people who are maybe already professional photographers, but they might want to add pets like to their arsenal or just even know how to deal with it better when a client, if you're a portrait photographer, for example, and you, you know, your client shows up with, uh, with their dog and they want them to be a part of the Christmas card, you know, in order to um, capture that in the most magical and best way that you possibly ever could, this will help you with that as well. Um, but I also, I mean, really, if you want to become a professional dog photographer and kind of do nothing else, this book is definitely for you because it talks all about kind of my processes and what goes on at sessions and then just really like um, the A to Z of photographing dogs on location um, professionally. Not only does it cover like natural light, if you're not really interested in, art, you know, adding strobes or artificial light, if that's a little bit, you know, out of your some people really love you know natural light photography and that's what their thing is and so when you look at my <laughs> yeah. work you might think that i don't shoot natural light but actually i shoot a ton of it and it's all in the book and then also i talk about strobes and i talk about locations and i talk about um oh boy giving back and photographing at rescues it's you put it all in there on. you it's put huge. it all all in the book and it's a big book you know and I'll, I'll put up a graphic yeah. of the book so people can see it but yeah it's it's a it's a substantial book <laughs> yeah so you're you're it's like the bible for dog photography right yeah well i mean i'd like to think that the, it could become the one go-to book yeah for professional dog photographers um yep. when i first turned in the manuscript the the folks at rocky nook are so wonderful my editor was like kaylee this is so awesome but um this is going to be 600 pages long <laughs> if we publish it like this <laughs> this is too much which i guess if you learned anything about me from this interview that you know that like brevity is not really my strong suit you know so i struggle with that so <laughs> it was really long and then yeah. um they took out a couple chapters uh so it was kind of you know the extraneous stuff they're like all right listen we got this we'll just we kind of got to whittle this down a little bit and get this to a reasonable size book and it's still huge so i yeah. mean i really shared everything that i have ever learned in my last 10 years of photographing dogs professionally not only for private clients um that, that I kind of shoot all over, you know, the Boston area, the country, and then even the world. Um, but also what I've learned on, on commercial sets, sets um, yeah. pr you know, kind of producing shoots, professional like ad campaign type shoots. And yeah. then rescue stuff and then it goes on and on it's exhausting that's great that is great those <laughs> those chapters that kind of fell on the cutting room floor you should convince rocky nook to, to release those to like your community as as kind of the missing chapters of the book or something yeah. that'd be really cool yeah i was thinking that like bonus content or something yeah totally yeah. totally all right well cool this has been fantastic thank you for thank like you. i said taking the time on a holiday break to sit down with me and do this if people want to connect with you online or reach out and chat or see more of your work what's the best location for them to go to so uh you can see all my fun dog photos if you just want to peruse at my website which is www.dogbreathphoto.com um i also am pretty active on instagram so on instagram i'm at dog breath photography um facebook is, is relatively active too and that's facebook.com slash dog breath photo Oh, gosh, I always forget. It's either dog breath photo or dog breath photography on Facebook. But you'll find me. Just look it up. You'll find me. And then, yeah. and then um, oh, yeah, in the book. And you can get the book on Amazon or you can get the book directly through my publisher, Rocky Nook. Um, either either website, whatever you choose. You just just search dogtography or search my name. Either way, it'll come up. And uh, and it's pretty rad because it exists. And can you believe it? We already sold through the first print run. I can't what? believe it. That's I know. Cool. It's only been like three, two or three weeks, three weeks or so that's been out. Something like that. 
That is cool. Yeah. And I'll put the links, I'll put the links to all those URLs that you mentioned in the, the YouTube description and also on the blog post. So, you know, people can find it easier. That's so awesome. Thank you. That is yeah. so awesome. I'm so grateful that we had the chance to catch up and talk and, you know, yeah. um, I don't know, just like you said, in between this, this kind of downtime holiday time, plus in the weirdest year of all time, it's nice to connect with other people even if it does have to be virtually these days you know <laughs> yeah 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 we do we, we we do what we can until we can do what we want right so i love it that's such a beautiful <laughs> yeah. way to look at all of this yes <laughs> yep yep that's exactly what it is well cool thank you so much for doing this kelly this is this has been uh you know educational obviously and inspirational i'm excited i need to get another copy of that book now that mine vanished so i'm gonna get another you. copy thank you yeah <laughs> no me worries up. i got you <laughs> <laughs> Hook me up, yeah, because I want to. I want to definitely play around in there. That's a that's a it's a, a beautiful way to kind of dump and and share a snapshot of who you are right now in the book. So because your knowledge is going to be deeper next month and the month after, but you get a snapshot of where you were in this whole world of dog photography. Yeah, and and boom, and now the world can kind of get to where you were at the time when you wrote that. So that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Crazy. Yep. It's so cool. It's so cool to be able to share my knowledge with with other people and um, just kind of, you know, like pa pay it forward, you know, like pass it on to the next sort of generation of upcoming artists and dreamers and, and just just letting them know truly anything is possible. It has been a wild ride. And all those guys at the parties who thought, hey, this girl is not super serious or she's unemployed or whatever they, th you know, to bring it back to the beginning there. Um, yep. Yeah, it's jokes on them because life is magical. And uh, I'm pretty grateful every second of every day when I wake up and I go, puppies. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you keep doing what you're doing because clearly it's working and the world is better for it. So thank you for everything. <laughs> Thanks again for having me. This is Twitter.